Marvel's Red Guardian is essentially the Russian version of Captain America, and this Soviet agent has always been a morally complicated character. So, let's take a deep dive into the world of Russian superheroes and discover the untold truth of Red Guardian. <laughs> Still fits. The creation of Alexei Shostakov, aka Red Guardian, or someone like him was kind of inevitable. The Cold War was a big part of 1960s Marvel comic storytelling, and having a Soviet doppelganger was practically required for the major superheroes. The Hulk fought the Abomination, a KGB agent who'd been changed by gamma rays into an even bigger and uglier green monster. Iron Man faced the Crimson Dynamo, a Soviet physicist who built his own suit of super armor. Spider-Man even went up against what seemed to be an exact duplicate of himself, but it turned out to be a Russian super agent better known as the Chameleon. Interestingly, Steve Rogers' counterpart first appeared not in a Captain America comic, but in Avengers No. 43. Stranger still, the first time Cap and the team encountered Shoskatov, they weren't in Russia. Instead, they found Shoskatov in China, where he was working with a Chinese agent named Colonel Ling. Captain America immediately recognized the Red Guardian as a copy of himself, which Shoskatov acknowledged. Instead of a shield, this Red Guardian had a detachable belt buckle that he could throw as a weapon and then recall using magnets. It was a pretty silly 1960s gimmick, but the important thing was that having something round to throw at his enemies gave him that recognizable Captain America-esque aesthetic. Although she wouldn't officially join the Avengers until a few years later, the Black Widow was with Earth's mightiest heroes when they first met the Red Guardian. By this time, Widow had stopped being a KGB spy and she was a close ally and love interest of the Avenger Hawkeye. But as soon as she saw the Red Guardian, Natasha knew she recognized him, but she couldn't believe who he actually was. It turned out that the husband she'd long thought was dead had been alive all along. Alexei Shostakov's death was faked by the KGB so that he could be secretly trained as the Red Guardian. Even though he'd allowed his wife to think he'd died, he was embittered when he learned she'd defected to the US and was fraternizing with American superheroes. Natasha remembered her husband as a great Soviet pilot and war hero, but she was unprepared for the costumed super brute he'd become. It's easy to imagine a version of the Red Guardian who stuck around and became one of Captain America's top villains. He could have antagonized Cap again and again with a different scheme each time, like a Cold War equivalent of Captain America's original arch enemy, the Nazi Red Skull. If Stan Lee had still been plotting the Avengers when he was introduced, that might have happened. By 1967, however, a younger generation of writers was beginning to take over at Marvel, and Red Guardian co-creators Roy Thomas took things in a different direction. Don't make me come down there, you punk! The Red Guardian wasn't a nice guy, and you couldn't call him a superhero. However, he had a certain nobility to him. After all, how else could he be the first love of someone like Black Widow, who ultimately turned out to be a hero herself? He also had a measure of respect for Captain America, the hero who'd inspired his new costumed persona. So after running into the Avengers in China, Shoskatov pulled a pretty impressive move, sacrificing himself for Black Widow and Captain America. The superheroes were about to escape amid the complete destruction of a Chinese base, but as they were getting ready to go, Colonel Ling planned on shooting Captain America in the back, and that's when Shoskatov made a split-second decision to sacrifice his own life to save Cap, Natasha, and their allies. The Red Guardian may have been a supervillain, but he died like a hero. The second Red Guardian, who first appeared in The Defenders No. 35, wore basically the same costume as the first but was different in every other way. First of all, she was a woman, a Russian neurosurgeon named Dr. Tanya Belinsky. Secondly, she wasn't a government operative. In fact, she used her costumed identity to protect dissidents within the USSR as well as fighting crime. That was a pretty dangerous way to live, so when Doctor Strange brought her to the United States to perform delicate brain surgery, she decided to stick around. As the Red Guardian, she became a member of the Defenders and a member of the American superhero community. Although she disagreed with the oppressive Soviet government, Tanya was herself a communist, which gave her a different perspective on all sorts of matters from the rest of the Defenders, who were mostly American capitalists, plus one Asgardian Valkyrie and an Atlantean prince. During her time with the Defenders, the Red Guardian was targeted by a Russian agent who exposed Tanya and himself to a high dose of nuclear radiation which gave them both superpowers, but it also made them highly radioactive. For a time, she was under his complete mental control thanks to his new powers, but ultimately, Tanya helped the Defenders defeat the agent, now known as the Presence. 
Unfortunately, the level of radiation she was giving off meant that the Red Guardian had to isolate herself from humanity to keep from killing everyone around her. In other words, her days as an active superhero were over, and she had to leave the Defenders. She would return from time to time over the years, and eventually, she got her radiation under control and operated under the name Starlight. However, she was never as prominent a character as during her initial run with the Defenders. The third Red Guardian first appeared in Captain America No. 352. Named Josef Petkus, this Guardian represented a return to the original concept of a Soviet super agent and direct counterpart to Captain America. But by his introduction in 1989, relations between the United States and the Soviet Union were much more civil and the relationship between Captain America and the Red Guardian was likewise. There was tension and a bit of mistrust between the two super soldiers, but they were ultimately allies. In fact, the story that introduced the new Red Guardian had him taking Cap on a walking tour of Moscow. And then they fought a monster that turned out to be the manifestation of the sublimated powers of another group of forgotten Russian super beings. It was a very different sort of story that perfectly represented the sometimes strained peace that existed between two of the world's superpowers as the Cold War drew to a close. In a certain sense, the Yosef Petkus Red Guardian split the difference between Alexei Shoskatov and Tanya Belinsky. Like Shoskatov, Petkus worked for the Soviet government and served as a mirror to Captain America right down to carrying a shield of his own instead of a flying belt buckle. However, like Belinsky, he was a true hero of the Russian people, not a brutish villain in a superhero's clothes. When he and Cap were strolling through Moscow in his first appearance, the Guardian was cheered and greeted affectionately by the public, who regarded him as a greater hero than his American counterpart. He even lifted a little girl who asked to fly like a superhero and tossed the delighted child in the air. This was a time, even in the primary colored world of superhero comics, when Americans were by and large ready to accept that being a communist, even being a Soviet, didn't mean you were a bad person, and the character of Josef Petkus reflected that. On December 26, 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed after years of unrest and loosening restrictions. With no more Soviet government, there could be no more Soviet operatives as villains or conflicted heroes in comic books set in the present. Marvel Comics, with their 30-year legacy of Soviet supervillains, dealt with this by publishing a 1992 one-shot comic aptly titled Soviet Super Soldiers. This title told the story of how the various costumed Soviet characters in the Marvel Universe dealt with the collapse of the state that had given so many of them their powers and identities. Josef Petkus remained the Red Guardian, and he eventually became part of a reformed super team called the Winter Guard, which kept the peace in Russia and around the world in turbulent times. He eventually changed his name to the Steel Guardian, and he gave his life in the line of duty, like the hero he'd always been. For 24 years of Marvel Comics, Alexei Shoskatov was regarded as the first Red Guardian. At some point, however, it occurred to somebody at Marvel that both Captain America and the Soviet Union had both existed for decades before 1967, so there was no reason not to have an earlier version of the character. So 1991's Namor the Submariner Annual No. 1 introduced Alexei Lebedev, the Red Guardian of World War II. Naturally, he was an ally of Captain America against the forces of Nazi Germany. But after the war, Lebedev soon found himself opposing his former allies. Although his full story has yet to be told, he was said to have been killed by his own government during the 1950s, revising the origin story of the Alexei Shoskatov Red Guardian to be an attempt to create a more loyal replacement for Lebedev. As the flagship superhero of Russia, the Red Guardian often seems to be regarded by Marvel as more of a concept worth keeping around than a fondly remembered character, and thus, there have been more recent Guardians who were never really developed beyond a costume. Krasno Granitsky, the fifth Red Guardian, was introduced in Maverick Volume 2, Number 10. After appearing in three issues of that book, he was assassinated by a KGB general the very next time he showed up in Captain America Volume 5, Number 1. The sixth Red Guardian first appeared in Hulk Volume 2, Number 1, and the only real name he was ever given was Anton. A member of the Winter Guard, he was by all accounts kind of a jerk, and he also turned out to be an android. The seventh and most recent Red Guardian was Nikolai Krylenko, a Russian superman who was previously known as Vanguard. He first showed up under that name in 1978's Iron Man No. 109, but he didn't take on the identity of the Red Guardian until Dark Star and the Winter Guard No. 3 in 2010, after Anton the Android Red Guardian got his head ripped off. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more Looper videos about your favorite Marvel characters are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.